Hello, this is day 46 of Bible in One Year, and our Bible text for today, Leviticus chapter 17 and 18, and then Matthew chapter 27, verses 27 to 50. Alright, so let's begin with the prayer. Our Father in Heaven, we thank you for another day, and we pray uh, that you would uh, bless us, Lord, provide our needs, and teach us your ways. Uh, guide us in every activity, every task that we have, and may we learn uh, to be obedient and to be happy with all the things that are going our way regardless of whether it's good or bad as long as we know that there is something to be learned that there's something that would help us improve our lives and ourselves as christians that we would be able to please you better and be of service to you and to be able to uh, do our part in serving you lord and also please enlighten us as we read your word for today and bless everyone lord who are taking part to our contributing to the ministry please we pray in jesus name amen okay leviticus chapter 17 let's begin with that and the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto Aaron and unto his sons, and to, and to all the children of Israel, and say unto them, This is the thing which the Lord had commanded, saying, What man soever there be of the house of Israel, that killeth an ox, or a lamb, or goat, in the camp, or that killeth it out of the camp, and bring it not unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, to offer an offering unto the Lord, before the tabernacle of the Lord, blood shall be imputed unto that man. He hath shed blood, and that man shall be cut off from among his people. To the end that the children of Israel may bring their sacrifices which they offer in the open field, even that they may bring them unto the Lord, and to the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, and to the priest, and offer them for peace offerings unto the Lord. And the priest shall sprinkle the blood upon the altar of the Lord, at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, and burn the path for a sweet savour unto the Lord. And they shall no more offer their sacrifices unto the devils, after whom they have gone a warring. They shall be a statute for ever unto them throughout their generations. And thou shalt say unto them, Whatsoever man there be of the house of Israel, or of the strangers, which sojourneth among you, that offereth a burnt offering of sacrifice, and bring it not unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, to offer it unto the Lord, even that man shall be cut off from among his people. And whatsoever man there be of the house of Israel, or of the strangers that sojourn among you, that eateth any manner of blood, I will even set my face against that soul that eateth blood, and will cut him off from among his people. For the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I have given it to you upon the altar, to make an atonement for your souls. For it is the blood that maketh an atonement for the soul. Therefore I said unto the children of Israel, No soul of you shall eat blood, neither shall any stranger that sojourneth among you eat blood. And whatsoever man there be of the children of Israel, or of the strangers that, should, that sojourn among you, which hunted and catcheth any beast or fowl, that may be eaten, he shall even pour out the blood thereof, and cover it with dust. For it is the life of all flesh, the blood of it is for the life thereof. Therefore I said unto the children of Israel, Ye shall eat the blood of no manner of flesh, for the life of all flesh is the blood thereof. Whosoever eateth it shall be cut off. And every soul that eateth that which died of itself, or that which was torn with beasts, whether it be one of your own country, or a stranger, he shall both wash his clothes and bathe himself in water, and be unclean until the even. Then shall he be clean, but if he wash them not, nor bathe his flesh, then he shall bear his iniquity. Chapter 18 And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, I am the Lord your God. After the doings of the land of Egypt, wherein ye dwelt, shall ye not do, and after the doings of the land of Canaan, whither I bring you, shall ye not do, neither shall ye walk in their ordinances. You shall do my judgments, and keep mine ordinances, to walk therein, I am the Lord your God. Ye shall therefore keep my statutes and my judgments, which if a man do, he shall live in them, I am the Lord. None of you shall approach to any that is near of kin to him, to uncover their nakedness, 
I am the Lord. The nakedness of thy father, or the nakedness of thy mother, shall thou not uncover. She is thy mother, thou shalt not uncover her nakedness. The nakedness of thy father's wife shall thou not uncover, it is thy father's nakedness. The nakedness of thy sister, the daughter of thy father, or daughter of thy mother, whether she be born at home or born abroad, even their nakedness thou shalt not uncover. The nakedness of thy son's daughter, or of thy daughter's daughter, even their nakedness thou shalt not uncover, for theirs is thine own nakedness. The nakedness of thy father's wife's daughter, begotten of thy father, she is thy sister, thou shalt not uncover her nakedness. Thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of thy father's sister, she is thy father's near kinswoman. Thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of thy mother's sister, for she is thy mother's near kinswoman. Thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of thy father's brother, thou shalt not approach to his wife, she is thine aunt. Thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of thy daughter-in-law, she is thy son's wife, thou shalt not uncover her nakedness. Thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of thy brother's wife, it is thy brother's nakedness. Thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of a woman and her daughter, neither shalt thou take her son's daughter, of her daughter's daughter, to uncover her nakedness, for they are her near kinswomen. It is wickedness. Neither shalt thou take a wife to her sister, to vex her, to uncover her nakedness, beside the other in her lifetime. Also thou shalt not approach unto a woman, to uncover her nakedness, as long as she is put apart, for her uncleanness. Moreover, thou shalt not lie carnally with thy neighbor's wife, to defile thyself with her. And thou shalt not let any of thy seed pass through the fire to Molech, neither shalt thou profane the name of thy God, I am the Lord. Thou shalt not lie with mankind, as with womankind, it is abomination. Neither shalt thou lie with any beast to defile thyself with, neither shall any woman stand before a beast to lie down thereto, it is confusion. Defile not ye yourselves in any of these things, for in all these the nations are defiled which I cast out before you. And the land is defiled, therefore I do visit the iniquity thereof upon it, and the land itself vomited out her inhabitants. Ye shall therefore keep my statutes and my judgments, and shall not commit any of these abominations, neither any of your own nation, nor any stranger that sojourneth among you. For all these abominations have the men of the land done, which were before you, and the land is defiled. That the land spew not, not you out also when ye defile it, as it spewed out the nations that were before you. For whosoever shall commit any of these abominations, even the souls that commit them, shall be cut off from among their people. Therefore shall ye keep mine ordinance, that ye commit not any one of these abominable customs, which were committed before you, and that ye defile not yourselves therein. I am the Lord your God. Okay, so that's uh, Leviticus chapter 17 to 18. We now go to Matthew chapter 27. Verses 27 to 50. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the common hall and gathered unto him, unto him the whole band of soldiers. And they stripped him and put on him a scarlet robe. And when they had plaited a crown of thorns, they put it upon his head. And they read in his right hand, and they bowed a knee before him, and mocked him, saying, Hail, the king, Hail, king of the Jews. And they, sit, and they spit upon him, and took the reed, and smote him on the head. And after that they had mocked him, they took the robe off, of, off from him, and put his own raiment on him, and led him away to crucify him. And as they came out, they found a man of Cyrene. Simon by name, him they compelled to bear his cross, and when they were come unto a place called Golgotha, that is to say, a place of a skull, they gave him vinegar to drink, mingled with gall, and when he had tasted thereof, he would not drink. And they crucified him, and parted his garments, casting lots, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet. They parted my garments among them, and upon my vesture did they cast lots. And sitting down, they watched him there and set up over his head his accusation, written, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Then were there two thieves crucified with him, one on the right hand and another on the left. And they that passed by reviled him, waggling their heads, and saying, Thou that destroyest the temple and buildest it in three days, save thyself. If thou be the Son of God, come down from the cross. Likewise, also the chief priest, mocking him with the scribes and elders, said, he saved others, himself he cannot save. 
If he be the king of Israel, let him now come down from the cross, and we will believe him. He trusted in God, let him deliver him now, if he will have him, for he said, I am the Son of God. The thieves also which were crucified with him cast the same in his teeth. Now from the sixth hour the hour there was darkness over all the land unto the ninth hour. And about the ninth hour Jesus cried with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, that is to say, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Some of them that stood there, when they heard it, said, This man calleth for Elias. And straightway one of them ran and took a sponge, and filled it with vinegar, and put it on a reed, and gave him to drink. The rest said, Let be, let us see whether Elias will come to save him. Jesus, when he had cried again with a loud voice, yielded up the ghost. Okay, so that ends our Bible reading for today. Again, Leviticus chapter 17 to 18, and then Matthew 27, verses 7. 27 to 50 for the reflection or something to share so in leviticus 17 um, we see uh the commandment of god not to eat blood but there are certain uh what do you call this theologians or pastors who believe that uh, that was the case back then because for the israelites whenever they commit a sin they have to offer sacrifices and the offering should be, you know, a live animal with blood, and it is the blood that would uh, redeem them or would uh, cause for the remission of sins. So that was this, some are, some say that that was the case in the Old Testament, but in the New Testament, since Jesus is the one who, you know, became the sacrifice for all of us, who redeemed us from our sins, who gave us salvation, uh, you know, when we accept him as our savior and lord so with him as the sacrifice you know there's no need for us to offer animals you know lambs goats or whatnot so uh, it is his blood that uh, redeemed us uh, that saved us so in a way they do believe uh, that in after the death of jesus christ on the calvary you know he rose again and he ascended to heaven in that case you know there's no need for us to sacrifice again all we need to do is to believe in him and that when he died on the cross he died for us all right so these days uh, of course there are groups who still believe that you shouldn't eat blood and then there are those that uh, now believe that you know there's no need for that because it's already jesus christ too uh, became the final sacrifice okay so some are, some say that it, it's not okay to um do that but anyway um that was that was the what do you call this the discussion and then in leviticus chapter 18 uh commandments on you know not seeing and the nakedness of other people so basically it's some sort of you know respect them and I think the nakedness would pertain to the things that uh, needed to be hidden, you know, personal to the person. And you don't, you know, there, there are things that the person would not want others to know. And so you should let them be and respect them. So you should not uncover anyone's nakedness. Okay, it might pertain to, you know, secrets or sins that they're trying to hide. But then, of course, the, the confession of sins is now uh, done directly to God. You know, um uh there are those that confess their sins to you know leaders of the church and but then there are those uh groups that uh, believe that when you confess you confess it directly to god you no need to uh, go through a middleman because uh our you know jesus said no one coming to the father except by me so jesus christ is our only middleman uh to be accepted by the father so when you pray you pray to uh the lord jesus christ so in a way that's it all right and then in matthew chapter 27 20, uh, verses 27 to 50 um we see jesus christ being uh what do you call this i wouldn't say punished because he's not deserving of any punishment but he's been um uh, thrown into prison they did uh bad things to him uh they beat him they spit on him they put crown of thorns on his head 
those things. All right. And then they mocked him. They spit on his face. Uh, they really did a lot of bad things back back then. And then of course, uh, we also see that he was crucified. Someone uh, took his cross, uh, carried it for him, and then he was crucified with two others, two thieves. And then people were mocking him, saying that if you are the son of God, you know, save yourself, come down from the cross, and then we will believe. But of course, Jesus knew that uh, there is a higher purpose and why he has to be crucified on the cross. And again, it's for our salvation. Um, he is the lamb. He is the sacrifice. He is the one who would redeem us from our sins. Uh, that would make us sinners acceptable uh, in front of God. He, he, would be, he would be our middleman. He's the one who's going to redeem us because he's sinless. And he has that ability to uh, redeem us. All right. Um, here in Matthew, um, it wasn't stated about you know one of the thieves actually mocked him, and then the other thief uh, believed in him and asked him to you know remember me, Lord, when uh, when you get to heaven. And Jesus answered that uh, yes, he would bring that person who believes in him who believe in him okay um it wasn't detailed in Matthew, but in the other gospels written by the other um apostles it was stated but um before uh it was actually doubtful you know when people uh when people are dying and then you know some people would witness to them uh, told people would share the gospel to them and then tell them about Jesus Christ that you know before you die you should uh, trust in Jesus Christ so that uh, you should repent your sins accept him as your Lord and Savior and so that when you die you're going to go to heaven okay but then when you think about it uh, before this was my thoughts you know uh, how would you prove that you actually believe in Jesus Christ when you know after a few hours after a few days you died and you know, you did not, you weren't able to show uh, your obedience to God that you actually uh, uh, understand, uh, you, you know, what you call this. You read his word to know more about him and to be closer to him, to have a good relationship with him. You cannot do that if you're already dying, right? And so I was doubtful if people who are dying, who said they believe in Jesus Christ, are actually going to heaven, right? Uh, that was my uh, question before, but then uh, your uh, pastor then uh, made this uh, sermon or no, sorry preaching one time during the service, and he did say that uh, yes, uh, those people who are dying, who you know heard about Jesus Christ in the last minute or in the last day of their lives, who says they believe in Him, that they accept Him as Lord and Savior, and that they are are uh, repenting of their sins that they could they would be accepted to heaven as well as long as you know, it's true repentance and that they truly genuinely and sincerely believe and accept jesus christ as their savior and one of the you know i wouldn't say evidence but a picture of it is that thief that was crucified with jesus christ he believed in jesus christ you know in that moment as well and when he asked Jesus to, you know, bring him, remember him when he goes to heaven, Jesus brought him with him to heaven. Okay, so it's a good thing to know, you know, that uh, even though we have uh, loved ones who are not yet saved, they, they still have a chance. And sometimes even though when they're already dying, there's still a chance that they could be saved as long as uh, they would be able to, you know, learn more about Jesus Christ and understand the salvation and put their trust in him, accept him as Lord and Savior. And of course to repent their sins and if they are able uh, to get to know more about him and to be obedient of his commandments all right so that's it for today again this is day 46 of bible in one year thank you for um, doing daily bible reading with me and may have a blessed day ahead and you know a blessed week ahead of us